Hello guys, this video shows how you can master the shell modifier. It has some very nice secrets that people rarely seem to use. So here's just a basic plane and let's apply shell. So right away we have our inner amount and our outer amount. We can increase this. Here we have segments, simply insert small loops through here. You don't really need to do this. You can always just kind of apply at a poly on top and just kind of uh, insert loops yourself, but it kind of speeds up the process. Now, one really cool thing about Shell is that if we go on the top viewport here and we go into our create panel here and create a line spline, which I've got that set to shift one. So I just go over here and just, I'll press G to the grid, I'll press shift one. I can start creating a line right here. You can hold down shift to constrain to nine degrees. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just create something like this. All right, let's go with that. I'll press one right away to switch panels and go straight into the vertex level. We can, for example, select these, right click and so those to be smooth, for example. All right, so once we've got that shape, we can use this shape to ch change the shape of our shell. So we simply go into activate bevel edges for bevel spline. We click on none and we select that. As you can see, this is a very good method for quickly getting ornamental detail and for just making your panels just more interesting right away. Useful for kind of wooden ornaments, sci-fi panels, uh, trim that you see on doors and fancy houses. So just lots of nice things here, guys. One thing to note is that the spline, how you set it up changes how the edges appear here. For example, when we use splines, just like we use edit poly to apply different changes, we can delete those if we don't like them. You can also use edit spline to do the same. So I go to edit spline, go into the spline, the third sub object level, and I can simply scale like this to make it thinner or more pronounced. So notice how right now we have this loop going around here, but if I delete this vertex, it now looks like this. So we don't have that loop going around here. So essentially the topology of your spline, you can see how it matches. And so essentially, because we have this going one, two, three, it's doing the same here. It's going one and then two and then three. All right, guys, this provides a very fun way for us to work. You can see we've got lots of edges here, which you may not want. So what we can do is go into line, actually. Let's delete and it's spline and if we go into interpolation and decrease this you can see how it appropriately changes the complexity here so you can have more edges or less depending on your interpolation you can also of course use use normalized spline so what i can do here is apply normalize normalize spline and as you can see it simplified it we can keep on decreasing this and eventually it will kind of give us this so we can get different results with this as well. We can see how it makes it very complex. So it's probably best just to stick with the interpolation. So I can go in here and I can interactively switch this to be corner. It's now a corner. I can set this, I can right click to be a Bezier. And now I can move this. So I can interactively get really cool results. So this is a very nice feature. All right, let's keep learning more about the shell. So we have override inner material ID, outer and edge. So when you apply shell, you have three different areas. You have inner, outer and the edge. In order to better see this, let's go ahead and press M. And I've already got this multi subobject material. You can find it right here, multi subobject. You can see we have red, green, blue, RGB. Let's apply that. All right, so let's override the inner material with let's say two. As you can see, that is the inner material. We can also set that to be three, for example. Outer material can be, so this is the outer. So we can make that two. Edge, we can have that be one, two, three. Next, we have auto smooth edge on by default. So essentially this just uses smooth, so instead of giving us this, it gives us kind of a smoother groups depending on the sharpness of the edges, the angles. If we turn off auto smooth edge, you can activate override edge smooth group. 
And down here we have edge mapping. We have copy, none, strip, and interpolate. This is very useful when you're creating straps and you want to maintain the texture. But to quickly show you, let me create a new plane. And let's say we're creating some sort of strap. You know, I use this for helmets and things like that. So I will go ahead and just say, you know, let's let's create some basic strap details. So we got we got a strap going around here, something like that. All right, and so let's see what to create some sort of like thread detail on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new material and I'm gonna put some sort of thread or some sort of tiling texture in the diffuse slot. All right, you can see I've got this. Let me quickly apply UVW map on top. Although normally I would use Unwrap UVW because it'd be more complex than this, but let's just do a quick planar map. Let's just press one to go into sub budget gizmo and let's just kind of scale this to make it look more like that. And so let's say I got something like this. Now, when you apply shell, let's decrease that. So the default copy just kind of stretches the texture out. We can see it better if we increase the outer amount. None just kind of removes that. Strip does this and interpolate. Even though it may look very similar to copy, the trick is increasing the offset value here which as you can see interpolates that texture down and kind of continues it so this just makes it absolutely fantastic for continuing the texture all around this is my preferred method for getting really nice strap details otherwise it's a huge pain doing this with uvs but now we have this automatically with the interpolate so a very essential feature in making lots of straps definitely come in handy so we can select the edges we can select the interfaces the outer faces we can also strengthen straighten corners as well with that off it kind of gives us this kind of a wonky lopsided effect and it gets more pronounced the larger this is so it gets more pronounced but if you activate straight corners it will straighten it out all right guys you are now masters of using the shell modifier go ahead and use it to create uh wooden ornaments, straps, and all sorts of other things. Sci-fi panels, thank you for watching, and take care.